Hello, children. So, new setup, higher definition with which to see the bags under my eyes, and now a better mic to hear the sweet, sweet sound of my voice. Not that any of this will mean I'm any better at this or that the content's any better, but, you know, you can fully enjoy the terribleness. Uh, so at any rate, new edition of Old Man Shouting at Clouds. And what are we talking about today? Uh, we've touched on this before, but I think it's worth expanding on. Uh, the value of failure. Uh, and why it's not something to be feared or avoided. Uh, it's something to lean into. So uh, this topic's particularly relevant because one of you who shall remain nameless in this video has been scuffling with this a bit lately. Uh, we've been getting super frustrated about not being great at things right away, okay? And I know that this is a, a hard message to hear when you're young, and uh, honestly, even for people who are adults, it's tough, right? Most people are not good at failure, and I think some of that's cultural. You know, we've we've kind of embraced this idea that you should avoid failing at things, and I don't know if embraced is even the right word, but it's become kind of a cultural norm that you should be just terrified of failing at anything, and... I couldn't disagree with that more. I mean, I think we should embrace failure. I think you should see it as a necessary part of the process that gets you to success, right? Literally nobody is good at things right away, okay? The first time you tried to walk, you were terrible at it. The first time you tried to go to the bathroom in a toilet, you peed all over the seat, okay? literally basic things okay the first time you tried to chew food you were terrible at it these are things that are just basic survival so how on earth would you imagine that you'd get good at any skill that's worth having overnight that you just wake up and be good at it it's not a thing okay everybody starts out being terrible at everything and the more often you do it especially if you practice things the right way the better you'll get. Now, when I say that, I don't mean practice it for an hour and you're going to be amazing at it. What I mean is continue to practice and fail forward over the course of your lifetime. Okay. Most, again, most skills that are worth having are not the kind of thing you can build overnight. They're not the kind of thing you could build in a year. It takes time. There's been a, there have been books written about this. Okay. A really good one. Um, Malcolm Gladwell's written a book about this. And to some extent, some of these hypotheses have been a little bit debunked, but not really. Like, so there, there's a theory, the 10,000 hour theory, right? 10,000 hours of effort is what it takes to become an expert at anything. Okay, that was the hypothesis here. And again, to some extent, that's been a little bit disproven. But it, the premise is still mostly true, which is that it takes a really long time to de develop expertise at anything. Here's a perfect example. Okay, you see this guitar sitting behind me? I first picked up a guitar with the intention of learning how to play my freshman year of college. Okay? I'm going to date myself a little here. That was in 2004. Okay? If you had the displeasure of listening to me play this right now, I'm not Jimi Hendrix, okay? I'm not particularly good at it now. And that is about 20 years later, okay? So 20 years off and on of messing around on a guitar, not and not, and not super focused practice, by the way. I, I have not had a guitar teacher. I've not had an expert showing me what I should be doing. A lot of this is playing guitar tabs. A lot of this is watching YouTube videos and just messing around in my spare time, which, you know, when you're a father of three and you have a full-time job, not a lot of spare time to go around. So admittedly, it's going to take me a lot longer to get to 10,000 hours of focused practice uh, than it would if I, you know, had no responsibilities or if I was a kid. And, you know, all I had to do was go to school. But that's exactly the point. 
okay, I haven't given up on playing guitar. I still care about getting good at it or at least becoming respectable at it. But I don't fret about the fact that it's, you know, when I learn a new song, like I'm, I'm in the process of learning one of my absolute favorite songs right now, Interstate Love Song by Stone Temple Pilots. I'm not flawless at it, okay? Again, after playing guitar off and on for 20 years, it still takes time to learn a new song and to be able to play it so that other people would recognize it, let alone to be able to play it flawlessly, okay? But instead of getting frustrated by that, I just look at it as part of the process. Every time I pick up that guitar and I play that song badly, I know that the next time, or maybe the time after that, I'm probably going to play it incrementally better, okay? It's not going to go from terrible to perfect in a week. It's going to go from terrible to slightly less terrible, and then slightly less terrible each time until eventually it's a recognizable tune and maybe someday it actually sounds good. That is the case with everything, okay? Here's another perfect case, something that's even less abstract. I've been doing long distance races now since 2009, I wanna say. So that's been Ironman triathlons, it's been marathons, it's been half marathons, and even an ultra marathon. Okay, but even like since 2009, when I did my first Ironman triathlon, it became a goal for me to qualify for the Boston Marathon. I have not done that. Okay, I've been running long distances since 2009, and I still haven't achieved that goal. I'm signed up for another marathon this summer. Will I achieve the goal? Who knows? Maybe. But until that time, I'm going to continue to fail. And I'll fail, and I'll fail, and I'll fail. And then maybe someday I'll succeed. But the point is, I'm no longer afraid of failing. I'm no longer terrified that I'm going to run this race, and I'm going to let everybody down, and everybody's going to be disappointed, and I'll be disappointed. Because... At some point along that journey, I, I've, I've learned and internalized the lesson of Sisyphus, okay? And if you don't know who Sisyphus is, it's worth learning. But basically, the super short, oversimplified version is Sisyphus was cursed to have to push a boulder up a mountain every day for the rest of eternity. And right when Sisyphus would get to the top of the mountain the boulder would roll back down and he'd have to start over again. Okay. For me, the marathon has become a Sisyphean task, if that's even the right word. But I've been pushing this boulder up the mountain since 2009, and it has been rolling right back. The second I would get near the peak, it would roll back and I'd start over. And don't get me wrong, it is still my goal to run a sub three hour marathon. It's still my goal to qualify for Boston. But I've, I now view it differently, okay? I used to be devastated when I'd run a marathon and I didn't achieve my goal. And now I realize that the act of pushing the boulder up the mountain is just as important as the goal, okay? And I think and I hope that when you embrace that kind of a mentality where the, the task itself is as important as the goal that you have, okay, the act of being willing to do that task, willing to do something hard, willing to challenge yourself, even knowing that you might never actually hit that goal, but becoming the kind of person who's willing to put in that effort and to never give up and to try ambitious things. I firmly believe that makes you a better person. And it makes you better at a lot of other things too. Like a lot of, I feel like whatever success I've had in life, a lot of it is down to the fact that I'm the kind of person that will just keep going. Okay. If I get knocked down, I'll get back up and I'll try again. And I will continue to do that until I'm dead. And I think there are a lot of people that, do, that will not do that, and I think that's had something to do with where I've gotten in my career, is that I'm just willing to keep pushing through obstacles, and a lot of people aren't. And 
I definitely believe that's a skill set that lends itself well to sales, which is what I do for a living right now. Um, I think if you are the kind of person who's easily turned away by a lack of success, sales is probably not the right career path for you. But I also wonder how many good career paths there really would be if you quit easily. So at any rate, the point of all of this is don't, don't be fooled by the illusion of immediate success. Everyone you see, you know, on YouTube or wherever, social media, it doesn't matter. Wherever you see people who are really good at something, most of the time you're seeing like the quasi finished product. Okay. You're seeing the end result. What you aren't seeing is all the work they put in to get there. All the times they failed, all the times they fell flat on their face and they wondered if it was ever going to work. You're not seeing any of that. That's one thing that's really dangerous about YouTube, social media, the internet, just like this idea of all you're seeing is the highlight reel, okay? That's not reality. The reality is anybody you see who's elite at something or even very good at something started out not being that. They started out being terrible at it, and they just kept going. They kept getting better. They kept failing. They kept getting better. They kept failing. And every time they'd fail, they'd maybe get a little further than they did the last time. Until before before you know it, before... Like, the, the incremental improvements are hard to see, right, in the moment. Maybe you even feel like you're not getting any better. But when you look a year down the road, five years down the road, like, for, for me, guitar... Any individual time I pick up my guitar and play, there are a lot of times where I'm like, wow, I didn't play that song any better than I did yesterday. But if I look at a longer time horizon, so for example, if instead of saying, I didn't play that song any better yesterday or, or any better today than I did yesterday, if instead I look a year ago, I couldn't play Interstate Love Song at all a year ago. And now I can. That's the way to look at these things. Embrace the process of getting better. Stop feeling bad when you don't achieve something every single time. If you go out in a basketball game and you score zero points, don't let that wreck you, okay? There's things to learn from that failure. Learn those things and use that to play a little better next time and a little better the time after that. Don't try to go from zero points a game to 30 points a game. That's impossible in one week. Make incremental improvements, focus on the process. I promise you it'll work out better. At any rate, hopefully this is helpful. I love you very much. I'll talk to you on the next one.